Hi guys, how are we? Running just a few minutes late tonight, but that's because the great Meredith Roddy was finishing up her, one of her classes over in the Jesse James Beads summer camp group. And you guys, it was such a good one. It was such a good project. She was teaching everybody how to brick stitch and it's a fun one. It's a really fun technique if you are uh, over there for summer camp and you haven't tried the beads bead weaving I, I highly recommend giving that project a try it was great so how is everybody how are we doing you guys things don't stop just because we've got more than one thing going on right so we're here making up for our monday maker that we did not do this week because of the jesse james beads summer camp but i am still here with you guys on what's new wednesday favorite day of the week <laughs> jane says been so long since i have seen you i know right it's been a crazy busy day and you guys have no idea like the other stuff that is going on in between the lives is just it's it's insane and I took on an additional project to help out a friend and so I, I've got a lot of things going on like I just stopped about 20 minutes ago to eat something <laughs> so um that's the first food I've had today it's been uh, it's been a, a coffee fueled day so what's new Wednesday right that means brand new beads over on the Jesse James beads website and <laughs> You guys, this is the last stop on the California Road Trip collection of beads. This one is Lake Tahoe. And if you have not been over to the website to look at it yet, what are you doing? What are you doing with yourself? <laughs> Summer camping, of course, um, but it's gorgeous. Oh, I love it. I love the blues, the greens, the teals. I'm going to show it to you up close and personal. You're going to get a chance to see it. And Tina says, hey, mama. Hey, mama, right back at you. How you doing? It's been a busy day for everybody, I think. <laughs> she says, oh, no, you have to eat. I will. I promise. After this live, I will go and eat real food. Um, no, no worries there. <laughs> it is time for real food. All right. So a little housekeeping before we get started with our project featuring the Lake Tahoe beads. Um, I did want to mention the sale that is going on because it is such a good one. 20% off of Beadalon, you guys. And the code for that is kayaking all in, you know, celebration of summer camp that is happening. Um, so use your code kayaking. It's a $39 cart minimum, which um, that's that's a little cart. <laughs> I love it when the cart's a little one because I can fill it up with lots of stuff, right? So 20% um, off of Beadalon and there is a shop button. You just click straight on that button and it'll take you right over to all of the Beadalon that is available on the Jesse James Beads website. And thank you, Carolyn, sending me a virtual cocktail. <laughs> make it a double please um and that is the sale that is going on and those of you who have been keeping up there is a scavenger hunt that is going on this week as well and so how does the scavenger hunt work well you gotta be shopping right you gotta be shopping on the website and you are going to get a uh, pop-up that happens and the pop-up is going to give you a code that you enter into let's see into the the comments and notes section I just had to be sure that I got that right so you go and you can use this in combination with your kayaking code okay so just for instance let me let me run through the process with you okay so you're shopping on the website you're 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 going to use your 20 percent off coupon on your beetle on you've added everything to your cart and you're going to check out when you go to check out enter the code kayaking in where it asks you for a coupon code down at the bottom of that there's going to be a little section that says notes slash comments and or both and right there is where you want to put in your special code from the pop from the pop up that comes up. They will see that at Jesse James Beads when they go to fulfill your order, they will see that you added your code, your little pop up code in the comments, and add your free item to your cart. 
okay that's how it works so if you've got any trouble with that just reach out we will help you with it but that's all you got to do it's really super easy and super cool because you can combine your pop-up scavenger code scavenger hunt code with your um 20 off feed along code as well so that's a super cool deal if you ask me i like it i like it all right oh gosh mary says i'm back <laughs> me too me too let's see she says she bought tahoe already that's exciting that is super exciting you guys if you've not had a chance to check out the lake tahoe beads i'm going to show them to you up close and personal before we put together an easy necklace project this project is an easy one but it's an interesting one right i'm showing you interesting things today that's my goal for the day is just to show you some interesting new things that maybe you've never considered in your design work um, it's not hard we're just going to do some simple loops but i feel like the most important part of this is really more about the design element itself and not necessarily the technique and showing off these really cool beads okay so anything else i feel like there's so much going on i want to be sure that i get everything covered before we move on um, just another note the california road trip collection there is more involved in the collection so if you're brand new to jesse james beads be sure that while you are over on the jesse james beads website that you do check out the entire california road trip um, sarah james is over on the west coast taking a california road trip and sending back her inspiration and sharing it with you guys in the form of these bead collections that are amazing like I can't even tell you so over on the site right now the Lake Tahoe is there the Carmel by the sea which is one of my favorites out of all of them um, and then the Sonoma gorgeous uh, Redwoods and Grass Valley are all still available but keep in mind that these are limited edition so there are only a handful of these and they will not be around forever so if you have your eye on one I would go ahead and grab those now because they will not be there very soon <laughs> they have a tendency to sell out pretty quickly so all right guys let's get down to it let's take a look at the Lake Tahoe beads and then let's put together an easy necklace that just has some different different kind of elements in it all right let's do it all right so i mentioned i mentioned the colors if you've not seen these mm -hmm. all right first of all can we talk about these tassels yes please these are absolutely fabulous so we've got some tassels that are made out of fabric and you guys the fabric is so soft it's such a luxurious feel like it's not just like really stiff hard fabric you know what i mean like these are super soft and really really beautiful they've got a bead cap already on them all you got to do is just add an ear wire to these and boom ready earrings ready to go they look awesome single right as a pendant or to the bottom of a really long strand necklace but i always always take my gorgeous tassels and turn them into earrings just because it's instant gratification jewelry and they're so darn pretty right mary says those tassels are the bomb i agree 100 percent. i think they are absolutely beautiful really really gorgeous and this is just ex just an example of the colors so you can see the gray gray blue you know kind of that that light you've got the black you've got this teal color and that's exactly what you're going to get in the mix so let's take a look see shall we you guys it's so good it's so so good so one of my favorite things about this mix is that there are some big beads in here look at these like come on these are showstoppers all by themselves so you've got these gorgeous faceted glass round beads yes those are so classy and fun like add these with just a little pop of whichever metal you like some silver some gold whatever and you have instant like little black dress jewelry look at the big beads here like really gorgeous look how pretty I am so in love and then the bicones they're like large and in charge you guys know how I feel about it I love 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 and these crackle beads it looks just like water 
like you it it's that's water in bead form i'm i'm convinced that that's what that is and that's not all so there are <laughs> more deep blues these awesome check glass beads this color is everything i love this color so so much some gorgeous check glass beads that have like the little texture to them in this green but it's not like a grass green it is most definitely a water green right that is a thing <laughs> add that to the um encyclopedia of sarah isms for jewelry making all right and that's not all that's in here you guys so there are some rondelles in here that are pretty dang awesome so we've got some hematite colored rondelles that are a little bit bigger and then you've got these kind of rainbow metallic rondelles that are just a tiny bit smaller and I love a good rondelle right they're flat on both sides but they have the facet all the way around which makes them absolutely gorgeous and we've got some tiny rondelles in here in black and in that beautiful blue color there are some pops of brass in here there are some hematite colored beads in these little geometric shapes we're going to use some of those in our project oh so pretty so so pretty and then last but not least and i kind of feel like even though there are bigger beads in this mix that these are kind of the star of the show like even though they're not nearly as big as the big beads these really to me are all lake tahoe right and the washoe people that uh the washoe tribe you know right on the edge of lake tahoe so this has a very tribal feel to it and i feel like that's kind of the way our necklace is going to feel when we get it put together right it has a very kind of like tribal princess feel to it but these beads yes please i'm going to need a whole strand of just those <laughs> i'm i'm in love i'm in love can you tell all right, so let's get started with this project, you guys. I'm keeping it easy because it has been a long day today and I know some of you are probably worn out, right? And maybe you just need a quick little inspiration to send you off to bed tonight before we get started with another full day of classes for summer camp and some extra special things going on over on, on the regular Jesse James beads as well, guys. So don't feel like you're getting left out if you're not doing summer camp because we've still got tons of fun stuff going on. All right, so what I'm gonna do is you may have noticed that there are some of these little hematite beads that already have some wire wrapping. And it's really not wire wrapping, it's just simple loops. Um, that's a very good indicator of where we're going. We're just gonna do some simple loops tonight. We will do a couple of wrapped loops, but I feel like we don't do a lot of simple loops. So that's what we are going to do. We're gonna take four of the little hematite beads and we're going to link all those together right there's four that are already done just wanted to save a little bit of time so that we weren't here forever i mean i don't want to rush but i also don't want you guys to have to sit here forever and watch me do the same thing over and over again so um just want to be respectful of everybody's evening right and there's one more of those let's find that little guy all right, so we're gonna do simple loops on all of those. We've got one of the little tiny blue rondelles. We're gonna do a, um, a simple loop on one of those as well so that we have two of those. And then we're gonna kind of put together a very interesting looking uh, necklace, okay? And this design is one that I realize that is not gonna be for everybody. And that is totally okay. I'm always accepting of that when it comes to the designs that I share with you guys. And it's because I realize that not everybody likes the same things, but really it's more about kind of the design itself and um, kind of thinking outside of the design box, if you will, okay? So let's get started, shall we? All right, we're gonna use some eye pins for our little our little beads here and a lot of this design is going to focus on some of the smaller beads in this mix whereas a lot of times we focus on the larger beads there are going to be some of the large beads in our design but we really are giving these little beads a a time to shine okay all right so i just thread one of those beads onto an eye pin and you'll notice i'm grabbing 
<laughs> Windy. I am grabbing my um, wire right where it is exiting the bead, okay? And we're not gonna do a wrapped loop. I'm just gonna use my pliers to help bend that wire straight over, okay? So we're not doing a wrapped loop. We're just going ahead to bend that wire just, just like normal without leaving the space. Okay, now we're gonna come in with a cutter tool and I'm gonna trim off some of that wire. I'm gonna leave myself about a fourth of an inch. A half of an inch, if that's what you're more comfortable using, it does not have to be a fourth of an inch, but um, just, I, I try to make my loops match as far as size. They're not always exactly the same, but I try to get them close, okay? So you just wanna trim that off and you've got a small little bit of wire left over. We're gonna come in with the round nose pliers and we're gonna grab that wire right right at the tip and we're going to use our round nose pliers and we're going to roll that wire back towards us right to create a simple loop so we're not doing a wrapped loop just a simple loop and this is one that I don't do very often you guys that have been watching me for a while know I usually just do wrapped loops because that's my preference but I feel like sometimes we need to kind of you know do some other things now and then. <laughs> just keeping it, just keeping everybody from getting bored with it, right? All right, so we're gonna do a few more of those. So if if you are not not great at simple loops, this is a great one to practice. Okay. So again, same thing. If you feel like you can get in there and bend this wire just with your fingers, just by holding onto the bead without using your pliers, go for it. The only reason that I use my pliers is because when I'm doing a really small bead, sometimes I just can't get a good enough hold on the bead. So I use my pliers as kind of the leverage to bend that wire, All right? And we're gonna come in with our cutter tool again. We're gonna trim off. Carrie Lee, I'm so glad you're here. Okay, and now we're gonna come in with our round nose pliers again and roll backwards. We're not really rolling backwards, we're rolling back towards ourselves. we're rolling back towards the bead to create a closed loop. Okay. All right, we're just gonna keep on going, we're doing several of these, right? So again, I like to use my pliers, I just feel like I, when I'm holding a smaller bead, I have a better have better control that way, but up to you, okay? We're gonna trim, grab that wire, roll back towards the bead. If you can do that in one fluid motion, then you are just a superhero in disguise. <laughs> because I don't normally do my loops in one even motion. I kind of rock mine back. And that's because I never get a really good loop if I just do it in one smooth motion. Um, if you can, that's, that's amazing. I'm always envious of people who can do that. So that's pretty awesome. All right, slide my bead on. Same thing, we're gonna come in, bend our wire. Okay, and we're gonna give that a little trim. All right, and now we're gonna come in with our round nose pliers and roll that back towards ourselves all right and you can adjust and you can see sometimes mine are not always perfect that's okay i'm not worried about it you know as long as i've got a closed loop i feel like i'm in i'm i'm good to go right all right now we're going to do one of our little blue beads here and same thing just putting him on an eye pin Okay, use my pliers to help bend that wire. Just be careful that you don't crack the bead, right? You wanna be careful when you bring your pliers in, and make any little movements like that. Okay, we're gonna trim. And now we're coming in with our round nose pliers to grab that wire and roll back, All right? All right, so we have a bunch of our little beads ready to go. Now we're gonna work on doing a couple of other beads now, okay? So I'm gonna pull out these guys because you know how much I loved them. <laughs> so we're gonna use, actually we're only gonna use two of these. So we're gonna use two of these. And 
In this mix, there are also these little drops, and I didn't call these out originally, I completely forgot, but they, they, um, they are, rather, little black drops with that metallic kind of finish to them. So we're gonna do three of these, okay? And then we are going to use one of these that has that abalone, isn't that pretty? and one of our bicones yes please can't leave those out all right let's see kathleen i'm sorry where where did i miss what did i miss let's see she's using she's replying to, to sonia and she says she's using some head pins just make sure they go through your beads a 22 gauge maybe she didn't specify i did not specify um a lot of times when it comes to head pins and eye pins i normally don't um specify just because i feel like either is going to work but most head pins come in two different sizes and a lot of times people just buy what's there right and so i don't i don't usually you know comment on the gauge for those but i can tell you that the ones that i'm using are um these are likely 24s to be honest with you they are very very thin i do have a 22 picked out just because i need it for one of the beads it's a little bit stiffer um, but any any size that you've got in your stash or if you need to grab some over on the Jesse James Speeds website, those are going to work just fine. Okay, all right. So let's put these guys on some eye pins as well. And let's do wrapped loops on the top of these. So I'm going to actually, you know what? Yeah, I will. That'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and put one of these on an eye pin and then just because we like to mix things up, let's do a wrapped loop, shall we? So I'm going to grab that wire right where it is exiting the bead and I'm grabbing it with my chain nose pliers and I'm going to bend that wire just like so and take my chain nose pliers away and you can see the difference when we do a simple loop we don't have this space here between the top of the bead and the bend in our wire but when we do a wrapped loop we need that space that is created by the chain nose pliers right we have to have that space so that we can come in with our round nose pliers and place that wire so that is running between the barrel of the pliers Okay, now we're gonna take that wire, we're gonna hold the round nose pliers still, we don't need to move those. We're gonna guide that wire up and over the top barrel of the round nose pliers. Didn't move the pliers at all, all I moved was the wire. Okay, now looking at it down so that you're seeing like the very end of our chain nose pliers, you can see where our round nose pliers, that bottom barrel is over here on this side, which is where we need to take our wire in order to create a loop. So what we need to do is roll the pliers out of the way. So we're going from this position, right, to this position. So it's just that. That's all we gotta do. That takes those round nose pliers out of the way so that I can take the wire over to the other side, right? Now I have room to do that. I'm gonna switch hands and the space between the loop that we created and the top of the bead, that little area is where we're gonna do our wire wrap. So I'm gonna grab the tail end of my wire with my chain nose pliers and I'm gonna wrap about three times. There might actually be room for four here, but I don't wanna overdo it. So we're just gonna stick with three, okay? See the three wire wraps there? And then we're gonna come in with our chain nose pliers, or I'm sorry, with our cutter tool, and we're gonna trim off that excess wire. All right. So now this guy's got two loops, right? He's got connections on the top and the bottom, so we can hang something from it, and we can hang it from something else, okay? We're gonna do the exact same thing to the other one, so we're gonna thread it onto an eye pin, and we're gonna create a wrapped loop right on the top, just following the exact same steps that we did before. So grabbing the wire with the chain nose pliers, bending the wire, taking those away and coming in with our round nose pliers. Grab that wire, so this is running between the barrel of the pliers, taking that wire up and over the top barrel of the pliers, all I moved was the wire, 
and now I'm going to roll those pliers out of the way so that I can take that wire on over to the other side. And just so you can see, when I take it off of the tool, that's what we've got. Okay, you can see why it's so important to get that wire over there. So we've got that, that loop complete. Okay, switching hands, I'm going to use my chain nose pliers and we are going to wire wrap in that space. Okay, I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off the tail. All right, so now that guy has a connection on the top and the bottom as well. All right, so now we want to create some wrapped loops with our drops here. So we're gonna put these on head pins. I'm gonna put one, drop it down on a head pin, okay? And we're gonna start the exact same process to create a wrapped loop, but this time before we do the wraps, we're actually gonna pop this onto the bottom of our bead here. So just stick with me and I'll show you what I mean. So grabbing the wire where it is exiting that bead, bending the wire, okay, taking the chain nose pliers away, coming in with the round nose pliers and we're going up and over. And again, gonna roll those pliers out of the way and take the wire over to the other side. Now, before I do the wire wrap, I'm gonna take it off of the tool and I'm gonna take the tail end of this wire and I'm gonna thread it through the loop, not the wrapped loop, but just the simple loop on the bottom of one of the beads that we just made the loops on. So I'm gonna put that through the hole. I'm gonna take the two loops and very carefully just pop those two loops together, right? Okay, now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna grab that loop with a pair of bent chain nose pliers just so I can really hold on to that loop. And now I'm going to do the wire wrap. If you don't want to do the wire wrap that way and you want to connect these two with small jump rings instead, you absolutely can do that. Um, I just like the direct connection between the two, right? If you add a jump ring here, I would use a four millimeter just to keep it kind of small. And remember that every time you add a jump ring to something, you're adding additional length as well, okay? So trimming that off. That one is ready to go. I'm gonna sit that one down. We're gonna do another one exactly the same. Okay. Grabbing the wire. Oh wait, I'm sorry, put that one on an eye pin. I'm glad I was paying attention. We would have had to do that one over again. So putting it on a head pin rather, cause I had, I had originally put that on an eye pin. Okay. Same things, just following the same steps to do a wrapped loop. Oh no. I need to plug you guys in. Hold on just a second. I got low battery mode. Let's plug you in so we don't lose you, shall we? That would be terrible. All right. Now we're good to go. All right. Thank you for being patient. <laughs> All right. Now up and over. Okay. Roll the pliers out of the way and take the wire over to the other side. Before we wire wrap though, we want to take the tail end of that wire and stick it through the simple loop on the bottom of our little metal bead here. Pop that together. Hi, Linda, how are ya? Okay, and grabbing with my bent chain nose pliers and going to wire wrap here. And now I'm going to trim off. Hi, Catherine. Cold and windy in Australia. Well, it is hot and humid here in the States. <laughs> At least where I am, it is very hot and humid. All right, now we're gonna do another little series of linked together beads here okay so I'm going to take one of my eye pins now this is the one that I said was a little bit thicker in gauge um, just because I'm using this bead and it has a little bit larger hole than the small the smaller one so I felt like it, it really needed a larger gauge okay so now I've put that on an eye pin and we're gonna do a wrapped loop just like we've been doing okay so we're just kind of repeating. This is a really good project to work on your wrapped loops and to work on your simple loops. We're doing a little bit of everything here tonight, OK? 
okay? Going up and over. Take that around to the other side and then we're going to wire wrap, okay? You can tell it is a heavier gauge wire because it doesn't it doesn't wrap nearly as as quickly. I have to use a little bit more strength on that guy. Right? Wanda says now that is a bicone. It absolutely is. Absolutely. That's my kind of bicone. Like those with just ear wires would look gorgeous, right? I mean that bead all by itself makes a statement. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to take our other bead and I wanna hang this guy from it, from our bicone. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take one of these eye pins, I'm gonna go ahead and open the eye pin up. I'm gonna thread it to the bottom loop on our bicone and then I'm gonna close that back, okay? Now I'm gonna thread on our bead with that abalone finish on it right just like so and we are going to do let's do another wrapped loop just for good measure right at this point we're just playing with the with the decision between to wrap or not to wrap it's not going to make a difference one way or another as far as the design is concerned um but we're just playing and you guys know i always prefer a wrapped loop so <laughs> all right up and over Rolling it out of the way, and this one's gonna have a loop on the bottom. We're gonna hang our last little drop from this guy, okay? So if you are wondering how come we've got loops on either end, that is why. Looks like I've got enough room here to do four wraps. So that's what we're gonna do. Willow says, that bead is why I bought the beads. I love it when that happens, right? You see one bead and you're like, oh, I've got to have that. And then you get the mix in your hands and you're like, gosh, it was so worth it. <laughs> so worth it. So, so worth it. All right. So now we're going to add our last little drop bead and we're going to put him on the bottom of that bead that we just added. So I'm going to take a head pin and hey, Joan. How are you, my friend? Okay, and we're gonna do another wrapped loop. And we're gonna connect this one directly to the bead we just added. So again, before we do the wire wraps, take it off of the tool, take the tail end of that wire, stick it through the loop on the bottom of the bead we just wire wrapped, right? And then we are going to grab those loops or grab that one loop with our bent chain nose pliers and we're gonna wire wrap. So guys, check out all of the links and the information that Sarah puts. She's posting under Jesse James Speeds, this one's pinned, you guys, to keep up with all the important information, things that are going on. So we're having an extra special around the campfire project tomorrow night. I'll talk some more about that right at the end, but just in case you're wondering, <laughs> we will have another extra project for you guys tomorrow night. Okay, so we have all of our little wrapping pretty much done. We do have two more things that we're gonna wrap, but that is when we kind of construct the entire necklace, okay? Now, before I do this, I do want to mention two things. First, for everybody who is just now joining us, welcome in. It is What's New Wednesday at Jesse James Beads, and we are using beads from the Lake Tahoe, from the California Road Trip Collection. That's where all these beads are from. You can grab these over on the Jesse James Beads website and take advantage of 20% off all Beadalon. That is happening today. The coupon code for that is kayaking. Second, before we start putting this together, just a reminder that this is an interesting design, okay? And I use the word interesting because I like it. Obviously, I, you know, I, I put it together. However, I realize that this, this in particular design may not be for everybody, but the goal is to show you 
how to maybe think outside the box and maybe use some of your eye pins in a way that maybe you hadn't considered before, okay? So just stick with it, even if the, the concept is, is all that you take away from this, I'm totally okay with that, okay? So let me grab, I've got some four millimeter jump rings. We're gonna be using those. I'm gonna keep those right here with us. And I'm gonna take one of our eye pins and I'm gonna thread on two of our little black rondelles from our bead mix, okay? And before I thread on the second rondelle, I'm gonna thread on one of the loops on one of our little blue beads that we put simple loops on either end, okay? So I'm gonna thread that guy on. I'm gonna thread on another one of the little black rondelles, so it's gonna kinda sandwich that guy, right? Okay, now I'm gonna grab, let me put my beads over here on this side just so that I'm not reaching across and like completely blocking out everything that we're doing, okay? So now I'm gonna thread on another one of the little blue rondelles, okay? Got that. Now I'm gonna thread on two of these smaller rondelles with that metallic finish to them. <laughs> I eat my Wheaties. <laughs> That's how I'm getting them all done. I wish I had a clone. How cool would that be? Well, maybe it wouldn't be that cool, but <laughs> you never know. It could be cool. It could be a disaster, but it could be really cool. All right, so now another one of our blue rondelles. Okay, so this is what we've got so far, right? I know, you're like, where are we going with this? <laughs> I promise, it'll all make sense, it'll all make sense. Another one of the black rondelles, and then our other little beaded blue guy, right? He's going on there, and one more of the little black rondelles, okay? Now we need to create a simple loop on the end of this. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers, bringing those in and just bending the wire. I'm gonna trim off, leaving myself about a fourth of an inch, okay? And then using the round nose pliers to grab that wire and roll back towards the beads to create a loop. So now we've got a loop on either end of this. We also have these blue beads that have loops on the bottom of them, okay? So we're gonna sit that down for just a second, okay? Now we're gonna take another one of our eye pins. And if for some reason your eye pins are a little short, you might want to substitute an eye pin for a piece of 22 gauge wire with a loop on the end. So make your own eye pin and you'll see why. Because I'm gonna bead this right up to the, close to the end, so the loop is gonna be very, very small. I'm not gonna have a lot of wire to work with. So if this is maybe your first time doing simple loops, you might want to just cut yourself a piece of wire instead of using a pre-made eye pin for this. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we're gonna thread on another one of our little blue rondelles, and we're gonna thread on two of the black rondelles. Remember, I told you we're using a lot of the really small beads from this mix because I feel like sometimes they get overlooked in the designs that we do, and I wanna be sure that they all get their time to shine, right? Okay, so we've got two black rondelles. Now, I wanna thread on that bottom loop to the blue bead on this piece that we just finished, okay? Slide that on. I'm gonna thread on another one of the blue rondelles, okay? And now we've got two more of these little drops. Remember the drops that we put on head pins? I'm gonna thread these on. I'm gonna thread one of them on, okay? Now I'm gonna thread on this top loop this guy, hold on, this guy's got, I'll have to rethread that. This guy's got a piece of wire sticking out and I'm not okay with that. So he needs to be cleaned up just a little. Okay, yeah, definitely be sure that you cut really close, okay? Cause you don't want big pieces of wire like that sticking out. That would get caught on your clothing and that could be really, really bad. All right, so starting over again, cause I accidentally dropped the whole thing as I was sitting it down. So we've got our rondelle, our two black rondelles. We're threading on that loop on the bottom of the blue rondelle that's hanging from our first little beaded section that we did, okay? A blue rondelle and a piece of fuzz, <laughs> okay? 
one of our drops. And your drop can go either way. Mine's going so that the small is to the center, but it can be however you want, right? Threading on that wrapped loop on the top of our big bicone. Another one of our drops. Okay, see where we're going with this? And now another blue rondelle. And then I need to kind of slide my eye pin down so that I can get through the loop on the bottom of that blue bead, just like so, okay? Now I'm gonna finish this off with two of the black rondelles and another blue rondelle, just like we started with, okay? So let me grab, get those on there, and you'll see we have don't have quite a lot of wire left to work with to create that wrapped loop. Um, it's a very, very small amount, right? All right, so I want a simple loop. So I'm just bending that wire. There's nothing to cut off because that's a pretty short amount of wire, okay? And it's gonna make a little loop. So just be patient, roll back, and there we go and kind of bend your eye pins so that everything's straight when you've got them in your hands and you're kind of attaching everything together they can get kind of bent out of shape so you just want to be sure that you get all of those nice and straight okay i'm going to lay that down so you can see what we've got Okay, now I'm gonna take two four millimeter jump rings and attach these guys on either end here. See how this kind of has a tribal feel to it a little bit? I feel like it um, definitely has a kind of a, kind of a Native American princess feel to it, if you will, All right? So just using a four millimeter jump ring to attach that, okay. And then using a four millimeter jump ring to attach the other one. Okay, just threading that on and then threading that on there. And I'm going to close those back. All right, now this is the centerpiece of our necklace, right? And once it's hanging, You'll be able to see this. I'll put it on a bust when we get the whole thing put together so you can really, really see this. But we still have one more little set of things to do, and that's just to create the length. And so we're gonna use these little guys. Remember these guys that we started with? <laughs> we're coming all the way back around to these guys again. I'm gonna connect all of these with four millimeter jump rings in between them, and then I have cut two seven inch pieces of hematite small chain and I'm gonna finish off the length with some chain, okay? Just kind of keeping that part simple because I really want this whole pendant section in the middle to be the star of the show, All right? So I'm gonna dump out my jump rings and again, we're just gonna open and close our jump rings, just kind of connecting everything together. And this part is just easy peasy, just opening those jump rings, two pairs of pliers, okay? I'm gonna start on one side, thread on a jump ring into that top loop on our little pendant section. I'm gonna thread on one of our little bead links, close that together, and I'm just gonna repeat until I have all four on this side together. Okay. If you don't want to use the jump rings in between there and you just want to connect these directly to each other, you absolutely can do that. I mean, the sky is the limit with the design part of it, right? You can really get creative with this. If you want to add chain reaction to this, which I almost did, chain reaction would be gorgeous addition to this, right? It looks so pretty. But I'm kind of biased <laughs> because I think chain reaction goes with everything. So I'm definitely um, I'm definitely a fan of chain reaction. Um, it I can I can make chain reaction work anywhere at any time. <laughs> All right, so I have the four beads connected. I'm going to take another jump ring, open it up, thread it onto that last bead, and then I'm going to thread on one of my pieces of chain. 
Okay, and then close that back. So that side is ready to go. I'm gonna repeat these steps on the other side and then I will put this on a little neck so that you guys can see it. Rosanna had the exact same thoughts. She said you could use chain reaction here. Yes, ma'am. You can always use chain reaction. <laughs> chain reaction is always a good idea, always. All right, so again, just linking together these little beads with some four millimeter jump rings. Becky says, I love chain reaction. Me too. Me too. And you know what is so awesome about the chain reaction is that it looks pretty all by itself. So, you know, sometimes if I need, of course I haven't, since I've been, you know, social distancing and haven't left my house very much in the past several months, but previous, if I had an outfit and I didn't have time to put together a piece of jewelry to go with it, I'd grab a piece of chain reaction and just pop a clasp on the end of it so pretty all by itself. It's the perfect addition to all of the Jesse James beads, but I gotta say, it really is standalone gorgeous. Okay, so we're getting to the end here. All right, I'm gonna use my last jump ring. All right, close that up. And previously, before our project tonight, I had already attached a clasp and jump rings on the end of my chain pieces, um, just, just to save time. There are gorgeous clasps that are available over on Jesse James Beads. I use the lobster clasps just because I'm so darn lazy when it comes to clasps, but the honest truth is, is that picking a beautiful clasp to go with this is super easy to do when you go shop on the Jesse James Beats website. So do as I say, not as I do when it comes to the clasps, because I always just stick a lobster clasp on there, but there are such prettier ones to choose from on the website. So, all right, let me put this on a bust really quickly so that you guys can see this hanging. And then I will let you guys go for the night because I know some of you are absolutely pooped out. <laughs> I know I'm starting to go into low energy mode myself. Like, I feel like my, my battery is starting to run low on my body. All right, I'm gonna turn you guys around. All right, guys, now to show you what this looks like and hope that you like it. <laughs> but if not, that's okay. At least you will take the inspiration and use it, right? Some other creative way, as you guys always do. You guys are amazing at coming up with such cool things. So this is a very, very different, a really cool way to show off these awesome beads. And I just gotta mention for a second that you totally could hang one of these tassels <laughs> right here. Like a tassel, chain reaction is always a good idea. Tassels are always a good idea too. <laughs> so interchangeably, those work either way. So, all right, there you go. There is the design. And you guys, if this is not something that you are particularly fond of, think for just a second about how you can change this up because you totally can, right? Instead of having the things hanging here, you could definitely change this up and you could do the, um, the bicones instead of the small drops if you wanted to, like that would be extra amazing, right? But not only can you do two layers here, I used head pins, they are short, so you're kind of limited with your length here. But if you used 22 gauge wire, 20 gauge wire, whatever you are comfortable using, right? And did simple loops on either end, you could do a tiered look with tiered sizes, right? of your own eye pins in whatever length you wanted to make them and fill those up with beads. So you really could create a bib type necklace, like a big, full, very full, large statement piece with 
longer sections of wire running this direction like our two eye pins here, right? Something different that we've not ever done before, um, but kind of a different way of looking at using your elements in your jewelry. Because a lot of times in jewelry making, um, things are very often vertical right everything hangs vertically but very very rarely do you see horizontal designs and i feel like this is a really cool step in that direction so hopefully you take this and run with it and do some creative things with it as you guys always do and post your creations over on the secret stash group we always love to see how you use your jesse james speeds to create amazing pieces of jewelry so i hope i've inspired you i hope that i've given you some some creative food for thought and that's it for me you guys my day <laughs> i can say in about i don't know 10 minutes after i turn all the lights off and shut down the computer my day is done but i will be right back with you guys at summer camp first thing in the morning 11 a.m for a fun group project with all of the camp counselors um you can catch me let's see let me let me take a breath for just a second and think of checking out the board here so at 11 a.m summer camp group we've got a class 5 30 we have a summer camp class that is a um a daisy chain project with meredith roddy and i will be there as well and then sorry looking underneath here <laughs> Then for our extra special for Jesse James beads. So right here, it won't happen in the summer camp group. It'll be right here. We're gonna have an extra special around the campfire project tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. So it's a late night project. It's a little bit different than what you guys are used to. It's definitely gonna be an interesting one. Um, the project is simple and fun, but there's more to it than just a project. So come hang out with us tomorrow. We've got lots of fun things going on definitely check out the website for your scavenger hunt part tomorrow check out whatever that is for the um the scavenger hunt it's always different every day and take advantage of the 20 percent off of the beetle lawn you guys the coupon code for that is kayaking and that's it for me you guys it's been a long day it's been a lot of fun i thank you so much for joining me today some of you have been with me all day, <laughs> so I appreciate you sticking around and not getting completely sick of me, and I will see a lot of you in the morning. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Bye, guys.